Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a good day. Today I'm going to talk a little bit more about the Steam Deck. It's become a bit of a recurring topic on this channel so I hope you don't mind. I hope you like the videos on the Steam Deck. But I've had mine for a little while now. I've really got to grips with it I think. And so I wanted to share some sort of beginner's tips for using the Steam Deck. Uh, you know just general things that will make it easier. Some stuff isn't really obvious and I think that these tips will just generally help everybody. The first one is to do with sleep mode and this is more sort of aimed towards people who are not really familiar with games consoles in general. They've just got a Steam Deck or, or a PC. They've not got like a Switch or anything like that or any of the mo other modern consoles that do let you sort of like pause and suspend games but sleep mode on the Steam Deck is a lifesaver at times. You just press the power button on top while your game is running, the game will pause exactly where it is, the, the Steam Deck will go to sleep, it won't use very much battery while it's sleeping, and then when you press the power button again and turn the Steam Deck back on, well, your game will be resumed exactly where it was frozen from. You won't lose any progress, you won't have to find a save point, anything like that. And this is honestly just a great feature in gaming in general, but especially on the Steam Deck. We've never had a feature like this for PC games before, at least not an easy accessible one like this. And so, you know, being able to suspend PC games partway through is just wonderful. You still get quite a lot of PC games now without regular save points, they were sort of like spread out too far apart. And especially nowadays, a lot of sort of modern PC gamers, they're not, they, they don't, they might not have the time to sit down for an hour or two hours or something like that. They might just be grabbing 15, 20 minutes here and there gaming where they can, especially with a handheld that's kind of happening more and more frequently. And so the suspend feature is kind of perfect for this. Just play for 15 minutes, put it back to sleep. Then the next time you get a spare 15 minutes, you just grab it and, you know, resume the game without having to shut down the game and load it up again, which is always the problem with, um, with PC gaming. And if you're worried about battery life, you know that you don't really need to be put it, putting it to sleep is fine. It seems to generally be that if you put a game to sleep and leave it for about 24 hours, it tends to drain about 10% of battery. So, you know, that's kind of the number that you need to look out for. If you are worried, just put it on charge. But you know, if you're on like 80%, 60%, something like that, you really don't need to worry about leaving it in sleep mode for a day or two. Okay, my second tip is to do with SD cards. And what I want to say about this really is that they're not much slower than the internal SSD, which is really contrary to what I expected to happen. The Steam Deck internal storage is an SSD and uh, these are sort of renowned for being very, very fast. You know, loading games happens very quickly off an SSD and an SD card is just not as fast as this. So, you know, when the Steam Deck was announced and, you know, they said they had they had it expandable storage, there was kind of this debate going on online. Would, would it be much, much slower to play games off an SD card? And really, I found that the answer is no. It's, it doesn't seem to make much difference. Yeah, a couple, a couple, a second or two here or there, but on the whole, it's much quicker. I was kind of worried that if I was if I was playing a game off an SSD versus playing a game off an SD card, there would be a big difference, but there isn't really. So I think you know, for people who were concerned about only getting like a 64 or a 256 gigabyte Steam Deck, and they were worried about then loading up an SD card with loads and loads of big games, I don't think you need to worry too much about it. It seems to be okay. Okay, so this next tip is actually my favorite one and it lets me play games way better than I would have thought. And that is to utilize the changeable refresh rate of the Steam Deck screen. So the Steam Deck has an option where you can change the physical refresh rate of the screen. You can change it between 40 and 60 hertz. Now what I like to do is I like to limit the refresh rate down to 40 for, for a lot of games, you know, certain like 3D games, things like that. I find that 40 frames per second is actually fine on a handheld screen. I don't notice a huge, you know, difference in how smooth the gameplay is. But the difference that makes that I do notice is where a game is kind of taxing and the Steam Deck can run it, but it's sort of struggling to get it to 60 frames, you know, and it was like, it bounces around between 45, 50, 55. I actually find that really annoying. The feel of the changing frame rate actually is worse to me. So what I like to do is I like to limit that then to 40 hertz. And so you get a consistent solid 40 FPS throughout your gameplay. Like I said, I don't seem to I don't seem to notice that this doesn't feel as you know fluid as 60 frames, but also this is really good for battery life as well. It really helps with battery life. And if you're worried about you know constantly changing between 40 and 60 hertz refresh rate, depending on which game you're playing, you don't need to worry about that because Steam have built in a handy per game toggle. So, you know, some, a game like Space Marine, I've been playing in 40 FPS, but then when I switch over to sort of like a 2D pixel game, that's actually where I notice a weirdness when it plays at 40 frames. So, so I set the per game profile to 60 for those and it just switches back and forth for me. So it's a really good feature, really, really handy feature. I think it's really user-friendly and honestly, well done Valve for including this because I think it's, it's great. 
Right, tip number four now, and this is to do with the control schemes on the Steam Deck. So if you've got a Steam Deck, obviously you've noticed that it has loads of back buttons and back buttons are, I'm sure, great, but I have not really used them. And the reason that I've not really used them is that most games don't come with a control scheme with them in mind. And I can't really be bothered, if I'm honest, to work out the best control scheme to utilize all the back buttons. Similarly, some Steam games are not yet optimized for the Steam Deck, and so when you launch them by default, they don't really have a great control scheme available. And the way to get around both of these things is by using community layouts. So in Steam, you can go into the game settings and you can look at some control schemes that other players have set up and used for this game. And the best ones kind of float to the top, so you can you can you get to the best ones straight away and these are just the most popular control schemes that other players have used and you can just import these into your game really really quickly and so for those unsupported games you don't have to worry about you know messing around fiddling around with control settings trying to get the best way to play a game and similarly for games where you think a back button might be useful there's probably somebody already out there that's made a great control scheme using the back buttons so don't waste your time have a look and see if somebody's already made one because the chances are they probably have and it'll work great and you won't have to worry about it. Okay, last tip now, tip number five, and this is to do with Proton. So Proton is the compatibility layer that allows a lot of these games that were made for Windows to run on the Linux-based Steam Deck. On the whole, it runs really well, and where there's been lots of testing done, then you, know, you, can, you won't even notice the difference. But for some unsupported games, it, it will struggle, you know, it won't run, certain types won't run at all. And so for some games, you're gonna, you're gonna struggle. But one really handy thing that Steam lets you do is it lets you change what version of Proton you're using. So if one version isn't working, you can try a few different ones. You can go into the settings for the game and you can change these yourself manually. By default, it's sort of set to the one that Valve thinks is most stable, but if that's not working, just go in and mess with the, mess around with it a little bit and see if one of the other ones works. And sort of expanding on from this, there are there is a website called ProtonDB, and what this is is it's sort of like a crowd-sourced website which allows people to share their experience with playing certain games. They share whether those games worked, you know, flawlessly out of out of the box on Linux, on Steam Deck, or you know, if they had to do a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of you know, changing. It really helps you to see what games run really well. And if the games don't run so well, then they'll often come with like handy tips on how to try and get the best out of the Steam Deck for that game, get it working at least to an acceptable level. So if you are playing sort of an obscure game or one that isn't supported, then definitely check that website out because I think it will help you a lot. Okay, so those were my five quick beginner tips on the Steam Deck. I really hope you found them useful. Just one other thing that I, I think everybody will enjoy. If you've, if you've got the Steam Deck and you're sort of looking for a good game to showcase what it does, then check out the Aperture Desk Job game that's made by Valve. It's free, it's pretty fun, it's pretty funny, it's not very long, it's only a, an hour or two. And, and it's just a good showcase of the kind of what the Steam Deck can do, the different control functions, things like that. And you know, it's nicely polished, it's, it's, it's good fun really, it's pretty funny. If you've got an hour or two to spare on an afternoon, then you, you'll breeze through it. I, I played it all the way through in one go. And it's free, so you've got nothing to lose, so I would recommend checking that one out. How about you though? Do you have any other tips for the Steam Deck? As I said, these were sort of beginner tips. I know there are more advanced tips that are out there, like, you know, stuff about changing SSD and things like that, but I just wanted to keep this a bit more beginner focused, a bit more beginner friendly. But if you do have any other tips, pop them down in the comments and give other people a chance to read through and you know see, see what they might pick up. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.